Hey everyone, welcome to Amanda's Book Corner. I'm Amanda, and this is my review of Dating Dr. Dill by Nisha Sharma. This is the first book in her new series, If Shakespeare Wasn't Empty, I believe it's a trilogy, and I got this one from Book of the Month. So the series isn't just called If Shakespeare Wasn't Empty for no reason. The reason behind it is because the books are each going to be retellings of different Shakespeare plays. In this case, Dating Dr. Dill is a retelling of The Taming of the Shrew. I have to admit, I'm not exactly familiar with The Taming of the Shrew. I haven't read it or seen the play or anything like that, so I kind of went into this one blind, but that did not hinder my enjoyment of it, and if you've actually read The Taming of the Shrew, you might get even more out of it than I did. As I understand it, the author did switch the gender roles here, and she also removed some of the more problematic and toxic elements of that to make it a little bit more enjoyable in the 21st century. Dating Dr. Dill begins on the 30th birthday of Karina Mann. She goes downstairs expecting to have her birthday breakfast and she finds that her family has actually kind of forgotten that it's her birthday. And that's not the worst of it. They also spring some really bad news on her. Her dad is planning to sell the house in a few months and she wants to keep the house because her mother built it, but her dad is not willing to lower the price for her. She can't really afford the listing price that he's going for and the only way to get enough money for a down payment would be for her to get engaged because at that point her dad plans to give her some engagement money. He already gave the engagement money to her younger sister who is already engaged and is planning a big wedding and this is also a point of conflict in her family. Her father and her grandmother kind of look down on her and are really disappointed that she's 30 years old, she's the older sister and she's still single while her younger sister is already getting married. It looks really bad because they have rather traditional views coming from their Indian background. And Karina, she's really determined to get this house, but she also wants to fall in love. She doesn't want to just go into an engagement for the money and then take the money and run. What she really wants is to find true love. And so she's on a mission to find her true love in just a few months and hopefully get engaged in that amount of time. That same day, she meets a man at a bar. His name is Prem and they really hit it off. But then some things go awry and he abandons her and she's really angry about that. So imagine her surprise the next day when her sister takes her to a show that she's going to be on and it turns out that the show belongs to none other than the same man, Prem. And while Karina is in the audience, she finds out that despite the seductive words that Prem whispered to her the evening before, he actually does not believe in love. He thinks love is an illusion. He doesn't believe that it exists. and. He's at complete odds with what she's after, which is finding true love. So despite how well they connected before, there's no way that they can be together. And in fact, she's very angry at him and kind of publicly puts him in his place and it kind of goes viral. But that's not the end of their story. Certain family members get involved and decide that they would actually make a great couple. And at first, Prem and Karina are not quite convinced of that. Although quickly, Prem decides that this is actually a good idea they can get fake engaged so that Karina can get the money for her house and he can also get his money from his mom so that he can start a health center, which is his current goal right now. And same with her family, his mom doesn't want to give him the money until he gets engaged. Karina's still not having it, she wants true love, but Prem decides that he needs to convince her that she should go along with his plan, get fake engaged, so they can both get the money. And over the course of the book, he tries to convince her that he would be a great plan B and he'll be good to her even when they later break their engagement. So I just found this book really adorable and fun and I really loved most of the characters involved. Not all of them, I'll get to that in a moment, but for the most part, I thought it was really charming and fun. First and foremost, I really like the characters of Karina and Prem. I think Karina is such a strong and ambitious woman. She's really hardworking, she has a lot of interests. She likes reading, but she also likes working on her car, which is from her mom, and she also likes renovating the house. She has her dream job, even though it doesn't pay quite well enough to buy the house. But she's also a hopeless romantic, and she really does want to find the one if he's out there. She's very opinionated, and she always speaks her mind, but she's also secretly sensitive, and I think she's just a really realistic and relatable character. Meanwhile, Prime is rather closed off to love. He thinks that love is an illusion. He's a doctor and so he cites heart health as a reason to avoid love because apparently love is bad for the heart. And he's a very practical person. He believes in having deep connections with people, but he thinks that love is taking it a little bit too far. Even so, he's a very caring person. He's a very good doctor. And over the course of the novel, you start to see how much he really does care about people and how he's willing to go out of his way to help them and make sure that they're okay. Perhaps the most fun of this novel is seeing Karina and Prem kind of recover their relationship. 
We get to see as they go on little dates, as he tries to convince her of things. Sometimes he's crashing a date that she's on with another man because she is trying to find the one and she's doing that through dating apps. Those dates don't always go well and Prem is usually around to save her, sometimes literally, and make sure that she's okay despite how badly her dates went. But on the other hand, he's also taking her on dates of his own. She doesn't call them dates, but they kind of are dates. And I think they're a lot of fun. I especially love the one when they go to the Met in New York City, and I really love the scavenger hunt that they're on. I think it looks like a lot of fun, and I'd like to do that in real life myself. But with each of these events, we start to see that he really is demonstrating that he cares for her, he's there for her, he supports her, and I think it really builds up a really nice and gradual foundation for a true relationship between them. After a while, they're both kind of aware that they might be falling for each other. Of course, they still have different definitions of what that is. Karina sees it as falling in love, whereas Prem still thinks that he's just forming a connection with Karina. It's not love, because that's a four-letter word that he cannot say. I think these two are just so silly. They're kind of dumb about each other, especially Prem, but I just think they're adorable and I love them. But you know who I don't love? I don't love Karina's family. I do not understand how she has such a toxic family around her and they just completely take advantage of her. They don't respect her. They don't seem to really care about her that much. She's always kind of left out of the loop about big things that she should know about. And she's always berated every time she doesn't do something. They really expect her to do everything for her sister and her sister's endless engagement party and wedding tasks. There's just an endless amount of things to do and they think that Karina needs to do all of it. And I just think that's not fair. Also, I don't know, I guess I had a small wedding compared to compared to her sister Bindu, but I can't imagine how it would take up every single week for a year to get her prepared. I mean, that's, that's just unrealistic to me. But I really don't like the way that Karina's father, grandmother, and sister treat her. It just seems a little bit toxic and I don't like how they walk all over her. I do appreciate how later on she starts to kind of stand up to them. And I really like something that happens towards the end when Prem also says what he thinks about it. Love that scene. But it is interesting seeing these family dynamics, and I do like that some things do get better eventually. Maybe not better enough for me to be happy, but still better. Meanwhile, Karina is trying to make a connection with someone, whether that's through people that her aunties connect her with, or whether that's through people that she meets on online dating apps. They don't usually go well, of course. But it is fun to see these different text exchanges that she has with these people and the many people that she needs to block for various reasons and seeing her go on these different dates that sometimes turn out okay and sometimes turn out less okay. But I really did enjoy seeing the different text message exchanges that happen throughout the book. They usually show up at the beginning of certain chapters and they're pretty fun and I like seeing how she communicates with her best friends, with Prem, with her aunties, with these guys that she's potentially dating. It is a lot of fun and adds a lot to the book. I also like the different bits of Indian news abroad pieces that we see, including advice from a certain woman in their community, as well as some gossip that usually pertains to Prem and Karina. And of course, I really love the different flashbacks we get to the conversation that Prem and Karina had when they first met. When they first met, they had a three hour conversation and we kind of missed the entire thing, but bit by bit, we see pieces of that conversation as we work our way forward through the novel. And I really like that and I like to see what kinds of things they discuss and how those come up later throughout the summer of getting to know each other and potentially deciding to get fake engaged. Ultimately, I really do like the relationship that Prem and Karina eventually develop with each other. I think a large problem comes down to having different definitions of love and different love languages, but I really do like to see how they eventually kind of get themselves figured out and hopefully on the same path. There were a few scenes that were a little bit overly silly for my taste. One of them is when Prem and Karina have a little bit of a food fight early on. I thought that was a little bit overly silly, especially for people that are both in their 30s, but I'll let it slide because overall the book was a lot of fun and had a lot of heart. It was just really heartwarming and I really loved pretty much the entire thing. In the end, I gave Dating Dr. Dill five stars. Also, like I said, this is a first in a series. The next book will be about Prem and Karina's friends. And so I think the next one is about Prem's friend Bunty and Karina's friend Bobby. And then the one after that I think will be about Prem's friend Deepak and Karina's friend Vera. I don't have titles for either of those books yet, but I'm excited to see them. I expect they'll be coming out in the next year or two, so I can't wait to read those. So I hope you enjoyed this book review video. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. 
and to make sure you don't miss any more of my videos, please ring the bell to get all my notifications. I put out about two to three book review videos like this one every week, as well as one to two other videos like vlogs and listicles. So thanks for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!